All right, good morning, my friends. It's Wednesday, and uh, I think it's Wednesday, right? Yeah. So uh, we're halfway through, some of you, through your week, and uh, that's always a good thing and a good feeling. It, and uh, man, it seems like these days are flying by fast, but that's just life, and that's the way it is. So uh, yesterday, uh, you know, did, did the work thing, thought I was going to be able to do some writing. Remembered we had to get our taxes taken care of, so took those to my buddy who does my taxes for me and had a great conversation. I've known him since high school, and uh, we vacationed together and are used to, we're a little busy now, but so life's good. And, uh, we did that last night. We watched, uh, the, the opening episode of the second season of the chosen and, um, you know, really just an interesting thing. I'm not, I'm still trying to figure out the take. They, they don't actually follow everything in the scriptures. And so my mind is trying to process that and go, look, it's okay. Just enjoy. Uh, but I do love what, uh, how they present certain things and it's fascinating to me how people visualize what took place with Jesus but uh, well worth watching and um, then having some great conversation after so if you haven't seen those that episode yet or, or the chosen uh, the first season go do it it's uh, it'll be worth your time you know so anyway hey we're gonna spend some time in the book of mark today and and I'm loving this study it has um, you know I've taught Lots of, of scripture, obviously, you know, 40 something years of them. And, and I love going through books. I've never preached through the Gospels before. Uh, I preached through the Sermon on the Mount and preached through some parables and and uh, kind of did a, a, early on in our ministry with students. We did this, um, but it's been a minute. And it's so rich, and I'm I am loving uh, what I'm learning every day, uh, trying to stay a little ahead as we get through this. And so we're looking at the at, at today, it, more parables. And uh, just to remind you uh, of, of where we are in the context of everything so that we, we don't get lost in, in what is taking place. Uh, the, the crowd is at its peak right now, spiritually speaking. I mean, uh, physically speaking, they are, they are slamming Jesus. Uh, he can't get away from them. They're, they're coming to him with their needs. They're coming to him because they love his truth, uh, are hearing him teach. Uh, they're, they're coming to him because they, they have disease and, and, and issues. And so they just want help. Uh, along with that, the Pharisees have come in. They brought the big dogs in, the last confrontation that he had with them, and he got angry with them because they were attributing his works to Satan, and he basically uh, rejected them, that that's the sin of blasphemy. That's it for you. There's no grace for you. If, if I have, if Jesus is saying, I have presented truth to you, I have shown God truth to you and you want to tell everybody around you that 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 I'm I'm of of Satan and that's my work and you have you have blasphemed the holy spirit the creator of the universe uh he said you're it's over um you, they've been rejected that's hard truth cuz we like to think and, and rightfully so there's this line right that we don't know where that line is but we think that uh, man, th there's there's the, the grace of God is always flowing toward the unbeliever until the point of death. But really, in the scriptures, it it, it teaches that there is a time where uh, God hardened Pharaoh's heart, right? Thought Pharaoh hardened his heart, and God went ahead and hardened it further. Uh, in Romans one, God turns people over to to their own depravity and darkness. The writer of the Hebrews says, "There no longer remains for us a sacrifice for our sins." If you hear the truth and you've embraced these things, and then you reject that, there no longer remains. And so there is this reality, and um, this is this is all of these things tie in that rejection. And remember, he's always telling people, hey, I'm, I'm going to heal you, but uh, don't go tell anybody, right? Don't tell anybody what happened here, right? And he's shutting the demons up uh, who are saying, we know who you are. You're the son of God. And he's like, hey, stop it, right? So there, there, there's this interesting uh, deal that takes place. So yesterday, we saw the power of the word as it relates to the parable of the soul, right? There's three components in that. There is... Um, there is the, the sower, that is the, the, the one who scatters. There is the seed, which is the word of God. And then there are the hearts of people that receive it. And so he walked us through that. There are the hard-hearted people. And that's like the hard path that that seed falls on. Uh, they're, they've rejected the gospel. They're, they're not open to it. It's 
They're just there. Satan's going to come snatch the word, and, and their life is, is on, its, on its deal. Then there's the shallow emotional response, right? It hits, it hits the, the soil, uh, but there's, there's shell underneath it. There's, there's rock, limestone, bedrock, and so there's no depth for that to grow. So emotionally, once the emotion goes away, once the, uh, my instant Band-Aid approach to life, and you know Jesus kind of put a Band-Aid on me, let me get on my way, it fails away. You're still in a lost condition, and then there's the uh, they're distracted by worldly possessions, right? The, the the thorns and the weeds grow up and choke things out, and that's what happens to people a lot. You share the word of God, and and that's what happens. And then he says, then there's the then then there's the good soul. Those are the ones who have a humble heart because you can't be a learner unless you have humility, unless you know you need to learn. And so those who those who hear the word and it begins to take root demonstrate a humility about their life. They want to learn truth. They're mindful, right? They, they, they did, they did, it's not emotion. They're mindful. <clears throat> they have understood that he who has ears, let him hear. They hear the truth and it begins to move its way down into their heart. And they're all in, in that sense. And so they they sell everything in order to have that. The and the, So what's the fruit of all of that? Change lives, right? You and those around you. That that's what happens. Now, he's still on that mindset of uh, what happened. What is the fruit? What is the result of the word of God? And it, and it says um, that, that they, they produce some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Now, he shifts metaphors, but he's still telling parables. And so this is what it says. Um, <clears throat> he says, and he was saying to them, same conversation. He's just finished explaining this parable to them, right? He told the parable. They came in going, dude, we don't understand this. And so he explains it to them. Now he's still in that intimate conversation with his, with his group. And he says this, and he said to them, a lamp is not brought to be put under a basket or under a bed, is it? You, you don't, you don't buy a lamp and then put it under the bed so that he can't, really get any light from it. You you don't you don't have a lamp and then throw a basket over it to dim the light. He said that you don't do that, do you? It is it not brought to be put on a lampstand, right? Is so he's telling you a parable. God has given you now so we switch from fruit to light. All right? So the same concept. He, he's saying you've been given light. We lost three things at the fall. We lost life, right? In the day you eat it you shall die. We lost Light, that is, that darkness, uh, according to Romans, began to cloud us. Um, and so we lost light, and we, a life, light, uh, we, we lost that. And so those are the things, and then we lost love. We became selfish. So when the truth comes, then um, life comes in us. Light is in us, and we are to share the light. That's the result. What is the result of the Word of God? It produces fruit, right? It it goes where it's going to go, and it creates that life that was dead. It calls men to life, but it also is like light. It uh, it 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 opens the pathways for others to see clearly. The scriptures have used that terminology in several places, right? Didn't uh, Jesus? The scripture says God is light, and in Him there's no darkness at all. Jesus says I'm a light unto the world. Then He tells you and me a few chapters later in the book of Mark, He'll say, "Let your light shine among men, uh, that on, that on, on they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven." Um, Paul told the Philippian church, do all things without grumbling or complaining that you may shine his lights among the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. So <clears throat> he's, he's giving us a reminder that this is what it's for. He said, he's looking at the 12 that, that are with him and he's saying, listen, this is who you are. You've been given light. Don't put it under a basket. Don't slide it under the bed. It, let, it, let it shine. And then he says, truth will always come to light. The, the rejection of truth came to light in the Pharisees, right? Now he's saying, but it also reveals that in your own life, you have embraced you, he's looking at. You gave up everything to follow me. And so we come to verse 22, and he tells, uh, it's, it's, I guess it's a mini parable, but it's the same thing. For nothing is hidden except to be revealed nor has anything been secret, but that it would come to light. What he's saying is, truth is gonna, 
It will come to light. You, they will see it. You will eventually see the dark deeds of the Pharisees. You will see the light uh, of these apostles. And he's going to send them out in a, in, a, in a couple of chapters later uh, out to, to share this gospel. And then he says this, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Not everybody who hears, hears, right? Uh, it's easy to, to, to be in a conversation and not be paying attention to what's going on, to miss the, the nuances of the emotion of which someone's sharing with you, to miss the truth because you're thinking about what you're going to say next. You're distracted. All of those things take place. So he's saying here, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Pay careful attention how you listen. Now, then he says this, <clears throat> and he was saying to them, take care what you listen to. You take not not hey be what, take care what you listen to means that we want to hear truth. I'm going to reject if it's not truth. I'm not I'm not wasting time on it. But I'm whatever's true, whatever's lovely, whatever whatever's of good report. I'm going to let my mind dwell on those things. So I'm going to be careful what I hear. I'm I'm going to I'm going to open up the scriptures and I'm going to let that guide my life. There is no greater light in all of life. It is the only light. It is the only light that we have is the Word of God. I don't trust anything else, right? Unless it's in the Word of God, I'm not sure. And so this is how we operate life. So listen to what he says. He says, and he was saying to him, take care what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. And more will be given you besides for whoever has to him more will be given, and whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away. Now, wow, what does that mean? Well, it's the same thing that he says about the soul, right? The, the, did the seed work in some of the soil? No. In fact, it was taken away, right? From the from the hard ground, hard hard heart, snatched away. Uh, from the, the shallow ground, it withered away. From the rocky soil, it, it choked, life was choked out of it. But from the good soil, what happened to it? It sprang up. And, and what happened to it? 30, 60, 100 fold, right? There's, there's fruit. And, and, the, the, and the more of that that you have, the more fruitful that everything is going to be. And so this is, this, is his, this is his conversation that he's having to them. And I want to make sure we understand the, the, the point here. He's saying that you and me, when we listen to truth, God will bless us. God will bless us with the revelation of that truth. God will bless us with the fruit of that truth. And then we also will be a blessing to others, right? Because our light is going to shine. What's his point here? You and me have a responsibility in this realm of evangelism. We have been given truth, if you have. If you've been given truth, you're going to bear fruit. If, if, if you're not growing, uh, there's an issue. If, if, if you're, you, you're, in fact, you, you cannot stand still in the Christian life. The world's going to squeeze you into its mold. And you're going to get caught, uh, and you're going to demonstrate that you never knew him. And so we, he, he is either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. This truth that we receive, we embrace. We should eat it. We should consume it. We should let it transform us. If you can be sitting in church for 40 years or whatever and hear the word and you're still the same person you were 40 years ago, you should examine yourself to see if you're of the household of faith because the word of God grows. The light brightens. The fruit uh, expands. And this is what he's saying here. By the standard of measure, it will be measured to you, and the more will be given you besides. Get after it, he's saying. Share the gospel with people. Take the seed that God has given to you. Scatter it. And the more seed that you scatter, the more God's going to give you to scatter more. But you and me are left here for this purpose, and this is what he's saying. I don't control the soil, Right? Uh, I, I, but, but I do control the seed and it being scattered. So I can't worry about, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to scatter seed and I'm going to, I'm going to want the, the seed to develop in my life such that when I walk into a place, they go, there's something different about that guy. Um, so we were, uh, I'm drinking out of my, um, Cafe Du Monde, uh, New Orleans. Tammy and I were in New Orleans several years ago, chatting with a guy on the, on the street corner and he goes, I, you guys have a different spirit about you than everybody else that comes down here. Now, I was grateful for that. I was grateful that he saw, man, you guys aren't like everybody else. Not because we're just sober, but because we cared about people and because we were chatting about life. And, and, and so he understood that. He recognized that. 
That's the concept that he's after here. Listen, when you walk into your office space, when you wherever it is that you go, uh, in you know, in, into your family, into the marketplace, people should see the light of the gospel in your life. There should be fruit hanging on your life so that people can, can grab hold of and go, man, what is this, right? So, so this is his point, and this is what he's telling them. He said, listen, truth is going to go out. Right now, we're, I'm kind of, Jesus is in the process of closing the truth down, so to speak. He's still teaching it, but he's teaching it in parables because they've, all, they've Galilee made their decision, and they rejected him. And so now he's moving on, um, and and this is this is how he operates. But there's going to come a time after the resurrection, he's going to commission you and me, and then now our job is just to go, and we're just to share light, and we share it, and and it, what what happens to it is on somebody else, right? We act like so and so was just this great individual. Look how many people came to Christ through him. Well, that had nothing to do with him. It had everything to do with the fact that he was just faithful to to demonstrate the seed, and God was going to scatter it. But there were people equally as well, men like Jeremiah in the Scriptures, prophets, who never saw anybody repent of their sins. Uh, that's why he was called the weeping prophet. So it's not about the result, so to speak. I can't control the soul. I just share the truth. This is what you and me should be about. We should be careful to hear good truth so that it begins to dig deep in our life and fruit produces it. Light begins to appear. So we walk. That's why Paul said, uh, do all things without grumbling or disputing. You know why? <laughs> because everybody grumbles and complains, don't they? Get on social media. See how many people just want to grumble and complain about everything. He says, you contrast that. We're, we're not of those people. We, we are well satisfied with what God has given to us. So we're not grumbling or complaining. We, we are patient. We're forbearing. So we're not going to grumble and complain about people because we're, we're going to be forbearing with them. We're going to be patient with them. We're going to put up with them. I'm not going to be impatient about circumstances that come my way because it was sifted through the hand of God. It, so I may have a lot to think about, but I got nothing to worry about. I'm not going to complain about my lot in life. I'm not going to become a victim. I'm not going to let anybody try to make me out of victim. I am not a victim. Right. And that's not some mindset change. It, it simply is. I'm not a victim. I, I am an overcomer in Christ Jesus. So whatever comes my way, God is going to use it for my good. I don't lose in those situations. And so when I don't grumble and complain, what happens? I shine his lights amidst the wicked and perverse generation. So you and me are going to listen to the truth carefully. Then we're going to we're going to invest the truth in our life. We're going to act on it. And we're going to let it find good soil in our life. We're not going to be distracted. We're not going to be emotionally driven by it. We're going to be driven by the pure word of God, like milk. And it's just going to transform us. And as it goes about the transformation, we become vital witnesses for the kingdom of God. We become tools in the master's hand. We begin to walk in the good works that he has called and prepared beforehand that we should do it. Don't get distracted by everything else going on in life. This is the goal, to let God transform us. And by that transformation, as we share with others, they too are transformed. This is the whole point of these parables that he's sharing right now. Man, I love you guys. Grateful for the opportunity to share that with you. Let's go be light today, right? Let's do it. Let's just get after it. Let's let our light shine. And uh, let's see what God does with that. And let's, let's pray for fruit in the lives of others. Lord bless you. I'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing.